Hi everyone, this is video number 3 for unit 5 and in the previous two videos we've gone over reaction 5A, B, C, and D. We'll start with reaction E in this case. And this is a pretty interesting reaction because we're going to make an alcohol again but this time we're going to do what's called non-Markovnikov. We're actually going to do the opposite of Markovnikov. Um, so it, it's an unusual reaction. The reagents are not really obvious what uh, they are there to do. Let me show you the reagents first and then we'll give this reaction a name. Mm, let's, let's continue doing or using that cyclohexene ring and we'll make the carbons uh, asymmetrical. We have one carbon here, uh, the top that has no hydrogens, the bottom carbon here has one hydrogen. Markovnikov would say the rich get richer, right? The bottom carbon will get the hydrogen, but we're doing the opposite. We're doing what's called non-Markovnikov addition. This is, I believe, also our first reaction where we have two reactions uh, written you're an arrow. And the strategy here, when you see something like this in literature, is to run the reaction with the starting material and the first reagent, get an intermediate, purify the intermediate, and then run a second reaction. And you'll want to do this stepwise when you see one and two, because most likely the reagents one and two are incompatible with each other. Um, Either they will react with each other, or they'll uh, negate each other, neutralize each other, whatnot. If we have, if we know, actually I'll write it here. Let me put down what we should memorize in terms of its features. Okay, I know I forgot the name. It's coming up in just a bit. It's non-Markovnikov. Some textbooks call this uh, anti-Markovnikov. I'm going to try to focus one more time. The other feature of this reaction is that it's, i got to remember myself, um, but right now I'm visualizing how these reagents approach each other, and I now recall, jog my memory, that this is syn addition. Oh, that's strange. Because the last two reactions we looked at, 5, C, and D, were anti oh, anti addition. Anti addition. Okay. Let me give you the name of this. It's a name that it's going to be hard to forget. It's. Um, <laughs> I forgot it actually. It's hydroboration oxidation. Ugh. Hydro. Boration dash oxidation. Uh, the hydroboration part is with this uh, borohydride. That's the name of the reagent. And this is hydrogen peroxide. It's a very good oxidizer. Um, if you want to bleach your hair, you're oxidizing your hair. So this you're using uh, peroxide. So the name tells you the the two types of reactions that are happening. My I'm curious. My challenge to you all is based off of this and I'll give you a, a clue what are we adding? I'm not going to tell you exactly what we're adding I'm going to tell you that it's a hydration look back in your notes what a hydration does. A hydration makes a blank type of molecule the hydration that we looked at was reaction 5B acid catalyzed hydration Okay, think about that product. Think about now we're going to do this, make the same kind of product, but now we're going to do non-Markovnikov. And if you're really good, add those two groups in the syn addition. For now, uh, let's not draw any wedges and dashes. So draw me the product that you think I make if I'm telling you that it's a non-Markovnikov hydration. Okay, pause the video.
Okay. Hydration means you add an OH and a hydrogen. Okay. So one of these positions will add an H, one of these positions will add a OH. But it's non Markovnikov. So normally for Markovnikov, the rich get richer. The H goes here and the OH goes here. But it's the opposite. So now the H goes on top and the OH goes on the bottom. So with non Markovnikov, you do the opposite of what your instincts tell you, and you have this. That is, again, without stereochemistry. But with stereochemistry, and I'm warning you now that most likely all the fill in the products will be asking with stereochemistry. When, you know my disclaimer, when appropriate. And it's only appropriate when you form a stereo carbons or chiral carbons. So uh, actually we formed two stereo, <laughs> two chiral carbons. Okay. Or stereo carbons if uh, that's still a, a fine term to use. Syn addition. Mm, you tell me whether I added the H and the OH syn addition if you see this drawing. I think this is correct. What do you all think? Is that correct? Did I add H and OH syn addition? Do you see this carbon here? That carbon got something. And it got a hydrogen. But because the methyl group is wedge, that is implying that, yeah, the hydrogen was dash. That's syn. Same side. Syn, same side. But they could have both been what? They could have both been wedges. So here's the OH that's wedge. Okay, you don't have to draw this hydrogen. My graders are good enough. I hope, to realize that you knew that this is a hydrogen wedge because the methyl is dash. But if you want to emphasize, uh, emphasize it for yourself, yeah, you, go ahead. You could draw the hydrogen as well. So that's hydroboration oxidation, the general reaction. And it's interesting why this happens. Okay, Why is the OH and H coming on the same side? Heck. Why is the OH going on the less substituted carbon? Okay. For acid catalyzed hydration, reaction 5B, the OH would have gone on the more substituted carbon. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to show you the mechanism just for the first reaction. You don't need to know the mechanism for the second reaction. The mechanism for the first reaction actually does tell us why the OH and the H are on the same side. Or at, it at least tries to rationalize why. Start out with an alkene. And now this is where the, the pre-planning comes into play. We've got to set it up. We've got to be pretty careful how we set up the other reagent, the BH3. I want to put the B. The boron is it's a it's a it's an atom that that has some size to it. It's not it's not the tiniest atom, it's not the biggest atom, but it's more likely compared to a hydrogen, right, to go towards the less crowded side, the less crowded side. So I'm purposefully drawing the BH bond in this direction, where the B is closer to the less crowded side, the hydrogen is closer to the more crowded side. And you can almost see, oh, that's why H is there. That's why H is on the more crowded, because B is more likely to fit, because it's bigger. It's more likely to fit at the least crowded side, the less crowded side. We can draw the other two hydrogens, or you could just um, do this, because we're using BH3. So there's three hydrogens. This mechanism is very simple. We're only doing the first reaction anyway. You'll, you all understand that the, the double bond attacks. That's, so far we haven't seen any reaction that deviates from that. And when the double bond attacks the electrophile, uh, normally this bond is broken, whether it's to a chlorine, um, to an O, like in hydration. And so you're attacking the boron. Maybe that's also the, the key point. You're, you're attacking actually the boron, not the hydrogen. 
if you have that and you follow the arrows exactly, what this is telling you is that the H and the B add at the same time. So if they add at the same time, they're adding on the same side of the molecule. And that's why and I'll I'll make them both come from the back. Okay. So this is this is the intermediate, and that's all you need to know for the mechanism. Because honestly, the oxidation is pretty complicated. So I'll draw out those reagents of the second reaction. And you don't know you don't need to know why this happens. I actually am a little confused myself why this happens. The BH2 is replaced with a OH. It's oxidized. Not only am I not going to tell you how this happens, I'm not going to tell you why it happens in this fashion where the, we get retention of the stereochemistry. The B is replaced with oxygen without any flipping uh, to the wedge side. I Again, I, I don't know how exactly that happens, and it, it doesn't matter to us. If I ask you for the mechanism, this is what you have to know okay, to make the intermediate. Okay. Um, if you want to name these, I'll, I probably won't ask you to name these parts, but this is the hydroboration, right? Because we add the hydrogen and the boron, and this part is the oxidation. And that's it. Okay, not a not a very long mechanism. We're not doing the mechanism for the second reaction, and even for the first reaction, it's just one step. The idea here is if you study this well enough, okay, if you study this well enough, I could ask a question like this: Draw alk alkenes to make the following alcohols. Because now we have two ways to make alcohols. We can make them um, Markovnikov or non-Markovnikov. If I ask you something like this, then most likely I'm not worried about stereochemistry. I'm worried about can you pick out reagents and predict the starter material to make the following alcohols. So randomly, I don't know if this is going to work or not. Let's see if um, we have this OH. Okay. If you want to do trial and error, that's perfectly fine. Okay, you want to? I would actually suggest you try trial and error to see what doesn't work. Okay, and with with practice, you can even do trial and error on exam, and you won't lose that much time. You'll say, "I'll do this in five seconds," and on a scratch sheet of paper. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, okay, I'll try another way. You, you notice that for acid catalyst hydration and this last reaction hydroboration oxidation, you're adding an OH on one of the carbons of the double bond if there's no carbocation rearrangement, and probably there won't be when I ask you to do a question like this. So you should hazard a guess that, well, what if the double bond was between these two carbons, right? Wouldn't that mean the OH added to the double bond carbon on the end? So I have this. Now the most the more popular reaction that people can memorize is the hydration H2O H2SO4 and you could double check or you could give it to a classmate and ask classmate if I gave this reaction what would you draw and they would draw oh man <laughs> I, 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 I drew a reaction where there is a carbocation rearrangement do you see how if I make the secondary carbocation here I could do a hydride shift, and now the OH would actually go here. The bottom line is, this is not how you would make that. So this is an X. But do you see the benefit of doing trial and error? Because by accident, yeah, we made the wrong answer, but by accident, we, we got some study time with what? We got some study time with hydride shifts. Right, do you notice that you know your first carbocation looked like this? And then with a hydride shift, you went to 
that. That's where you hydrate, or add the water. After you add the water, you remove one of the hydrogens. So again, we made a mistake, but this was really beneficial. Like, I, I accidentally drew a molecule, an alkene, that would have to go through an, an, a carbocation intermediate. Okay, let's go back to the original question, though. Okay, that's good. We got that under our belt. I think we're ready for carbocation intermediates and rearrangements, what, if it does happen with hydration. But it's not the answer to this. The answer is, let's do it the other way to do hydration, to make alcohols. Hydroboration oxidation. Now, I wrote uh, on this page NaOH. Some textbooks say don't worry about the counter ion because they separate. They dissociate into Na plus and OH minus. It's this OH minus that is going to add, and where is it going to add? Non Markovnikov. So this this added Markovnikov for the rearrangement. This is non Markovnikov check mark. So wrong answer, but we learned a lot. Check mark there. Let me give you one more alcohol and you decide at home how you would make this alcohol. Oop, I almost drew the wrong thing. Mm. How about that? Okay. Now the question is draw alkenes to make the following alcohols. There could be more than one alkene that could be used to make this alcohol. Based on what we know, there's only one way to make this alcohol here, and that's through the hydroboration oxidation. But for this molecule, and I, I won't do it here, I'll just put a question mark, what alkenes can you use and what reagents? What combination of alkenes and reagents. You're walking into a little bit of uncharted territory. Not only now do you need to know how to draw the products from what I give you, right? Like this. Now you're you're starting to become real organic chemists because your boss says, you know, this alcohol has some beneficial effects for lowering hypertension or lowering your blood pressure or relieving a headache. Give me a couple ways to make this molecule. Okay. And you're gonna give them a comp okay, I gave it away. There's a, there's several combinations of alkynes and reagents. Whereas in this case we there's only really one combination. Okay. If you want to know what the answer for this is, uh, just contact me, but you know try to give it a good effort on your own first. Moving on to reaction 5F. Okay. You see how it's getting a little bit quicker now that we know terminology like visual selectivity, stereoselectivity, Markovnikov, non-Markovnikov. Reaction 5F is syn addition. Okay. And We don't know what we're adding yet. Um, what if I tell you I want you to add two hydroxyl groups syn addition? That's what this reaction is going to do. 5F. Okay. Let's use our alkene that seems to be very useful in showing stereochemistry. And my reagents are going to be osmium tetroxide, osmium with four hot oxygens, and NaHSO3. Both of these reagents are typically needed, okay, but the oxygens that are coming that are making the molecule come from the osmium tetroxide. You could you could if you forget this second reagent, I probably won't take off any points. And you know, I'll show you, I'll name it, and just from the name and a couple of details, I think some of you can draw me the product. 
Okay, first without stereochemistry and then with stereochemistry. So this diol formation uh, via I like to name this reagent because it's a I think it's a cool name osmium tetroxide four oxygens. You gotta you gotta make a diol. So diol means uh, diol means di alcohol or a molecule with two OOH groups. The diol, I bet you can predict the two OH groups will be on the two carbons of the double bond. This table's noisy. Oh my goodness. That's annoying. Whoops. Oh, look at that. Okay. Oh, nice. Let me focus one more time. All right, that is your charge. I'm going to ask you to pause the video, and you draw me the product based on that it makes a diol, and I should give you one more. Um, it is syn addition. Okay. What I'm going to do when you unpause it is that I'm going to draw the molecule without stereochemistry up here. And if I think stereoisomers are made, I'm going to draw them underneath with the correct wedges and dashes. Okay, pause the video. Draw me those products if you know them. Try to figure them out. Okay, we're back. Diol, di alcohol. Okay. I noticed that. Man, this focus. I noticed that, yes, there are two chiral carbons, and I want syn addition. So, in a question where I ask you, can you draw the products with the appropriate stereochemistry? We have that, <clears throat> and they are enantiomers. So this is a racemic mixture. Do you remember what enantiomers are? Like my hands. My hands are mirror images that are not identical, not superimposable, or non-superimposable. What that means is that, you know, why don't you draw this as a mirror image of this? When you flip this molecule to the left, you notice that the two OH groups would be dashed and facing these two OH groups as if there was a mirror right there where my hand is. If my hand was a mirror, then what you will literally see is um, this molecule turned over. Okay. So I'm not drawing the mirror image. But this is a molecule that can be the mirror image of this if you orient it the correct way. This is stereoselective. Okay. And you may ask, how can it be selective if there's, if there's a mixture? Well, it's selecting these two molecules over two other molecules, the two molecules where there is anti-addition. Okay. I think everyone's going to like this. No mechanism tested on this. Okay, I'm not going to test you on the mechanism for this molecule here, or for this uh, reaction. Okay, maybe I could push forward and at least get one more reaction, maybe the last two reactions. E F G. Okay. Next one is ozonolysis. I think I'm gonna try. Because the next two, which are the last two, we don't need to know the mechanism. Okay. Ozonolysis. This one I'm gonna change it up a little bit. I'm gonna give us an alkene that looks like this. Ozonolysis, you have uh, reagent 1, which is ozone, reagent 2, which is often dimethyl sulfide. Dimethyl sulfide would be represented this way. Okay. Two methyls off of a sulfur. There are other reagents you could put here uh, that help the reaction, but this is the more common one to use, so we'll just memorize that. For ozonolysis, this is where 
it's tricky because we're adding things to the double bond carbons, but we have to do something first. And some the, all the text will show the mechanism, but and if you're curious, you could read the textbook, but I'm not going to test you on the mechanism this semester. You want to cut across the double bond and mentally separate those two pieces. And when you mentally separate those two pieces, you have this dot, double bond. Give yourself a lot of space, dot. You want to give yourself a lot of space because off of the double bond carbon, we don't actually have a carbon here. We're going to put an oxygen. I'll put an oxygen here. Okay. Let me also add one methyl group. I'm going to add a methyl group on this right carbon because I want to show you something. If I put a methyl group off of that carbon on the right, you know that there's a methyl group right there. So with ozonolysis, using these conditions, you create molecules that have carbonyl groups. Now, if you're very good with your functional group and classes of molecules, which was a video, I think, in Unit 3, Unit 3? Yeah, I think Unit 3. This is an aldehyde. You know there's a hydrogen here, and if you want to draw that hydrogen, that's fine. If not, don't worry about it, but I typically like to draw the hydrogen at the end of the aldehyde. This is a ketone. It's a carbonyl group with a carbon on each side. With ozonolysis, you are apt to make aldehydes and ketones. How about this? Let's go back to our cyclic alkene. Practice drawing your reagents, first using your notes and then eventually from memory. And then use your tricks. Your tricks are put the two blue dots and put a dotted line across the double one where you cut it. Now the thing is, this is like a bracelet. You only cut across the double bond, so you only unclasp it in one part. What do you have when you have like a necklace or bracelet and you unclasp it? You don't get two molecules like we did up here. You only get one long chain. The difficulty with this reaction is can you draw it so it's clear to the grader what you're trying to convey? Okay. Because it's going to be a little bit crowded. I dissolve the double bond, which is what we want. We want to cut it. And I am actually going to draw the double bonds now going up a little bit to get them out of the way of each other. We have an oxygen here, oxygen here. And can you find my error? I made one error in the product. Where is it? If I look at the dot, I notice that, oh, that dot is also connected to a methyl group. It doesn't have to look pretty. Okay, so there's a methyl group. Um, because there's a double bond right here, I know there's a carbon here. It would be wrong, right, if it was just a straight line, because you should put an angle, right, for every time there's a carbon juncture. But there's no need for an angle because it's unambiguous. We know there's a carbon here because it doubly bonded to oxygen. Okay, if you count the carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Over here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So you can't memorize how many products we get. Okay, you have to go through the process of cutting and separating and see how many products you get. It's still true that we get carbonyl groups, and if you notice, this top part looks like a ketone, and the bottom part looks like an aldehyde. You don't always have to form both aldehydes and ketones. If this methyl group wasn't here, we would have a dialdehyde, right? If this wasn't there, it would be two aldehyde groups right there. Okay. Good. That's G. The last one, reaction 5F, and we are done. Hydrogenation. Hydrogenation is adding two hydrogens. So there's no Markovnikov rule because we're adding two of the same things. And we're going to add the two hydrogens via hydrogen gas and platinum. I'm going to put a little note here. It could be platinum, 
nickel, palladium, etc. But use one of these three. When we add hydrogens, again this, just turn it into an alkane. No carbons are chiral in this case, but I want to tell you in some cases you're going to have to show stereochemistry, and this is syn addition. The two hydrogens come on the same side. But you notice since we have no chiral carbons, you can't really tell which side it came from. Like for instance, how do I know which hydrogen added the wedge or the dash? Because we have both of them here. And over here, I can't tell whether it was wedge or dash either, because it's not chiral. Let me give you a situation where you would have to draw wedges and dashes. And that situation would be something like this. I'll have two groups. Because what you should notice is that if I do hydrogenation, and you make it into an alkane, cycloalkane, do you notice that both of those carbons are chiral? You gotta practice that. Like some of you were fooled because all you see is carbon and hydrogen, so you don't see a bromine or an, or an OH. But it is true, this carbon here has four different paths. A methyl, hydrogen, the path to the left, and the path to the right, which hits the other methyl quicker. So the four paths are different. So when you draw it with stereochemistry, you have to pretend that the two hydrogens come on the same side. So if I pretend that they come from the back, I have two methyl groups that are wedged. Okay, so this is with stereochemistry. Now you just have to be a little bit careful as with this example. Because whenever we had syn addition and anti addition, you were always drawing what? You were always drawing the enantiomer. For saying that you have an enantiomer. Okay, let's let's draw the hydrogens both coming from the front. If they both come from the front, the two methyl groups are dash. What do you notice about these two? These are actually not enantiomers. That's kind of a big surprise because didn't we switch the two stereochemistries? We had one wedge and one dash. So one has to be R and the other one has to be S. That's guaranteed. But the thing is, this molecule has a plane of symmetry. So, if you go ahead and go on autopilot and you draw me the enantiomer, or what you think is an enantiomer, you need to double check, okay? And either cross this one out, cross it out, because you're implying there's two products, but really, really there's only one product. So either cross it out or say, I drew what I thought would have been the enantiomer, but I realized that they are... That's all you have to do for that. Now, there will be instances where you would have to draw the enantiomer, right? What if I made this a, a longer group, like a butyl group? If I made this carbon part of a butyl group and this part of a butyl group, then they won't be superimposable. But you, you can tell, right? If you take this molecule here and, um, like my deck of cards, and you do this operation, just turn it that way. What that does is keeps the methyl groups on the right, but now when I flip it, they both become wedged. And it looks exactly like that. In the textbook, they do tell you why this happens. Again, no mechanism. Okay, so I'll make this abundantly clear. The first, the last three reactions, no mechanism. So no mechanism for the diol formation, reaction 5F. No mechanism for 5G, which is ozonolysis, and no mechanism for 5H, which is hydrogenation. Having trouble spelling. Okay. I'm not going to start a new piece of paper, but let me show you why. Because what happens here is that you have platinum, and platinum chunks, if you can see it, they are huge compared to a molecule. And what happens is the hydrogens just lay on top of it. Okay? They separate from each other and they just lay down like this on the surface of platinum. So the thing is, when a double bond comes its way, 
Um, I don't want to draw this. I'll just draw the just a bunch of carbons. So when a double bond floats and starts to be attracted to this platinum chunk, like a crystal, you know, the hydrogen really has only one opportunity, and they'll add at the same time. Maybe not at the same time, but they'll almost likely add on the same side, and that's where we get syn addition. That's it. I think we were looking at eight uh, reactions for unit five. That's all of them. Um, maybe in class and not in the video, I'll show you how we can draw a roadmap. Because I think the title of this unit was Alkene Reactions, the main city of the map. So we're going to make a reaction roadmap. And it's going to be centered around this major city of the alkenes. Because we could have eight reactions that start from an alkene. So you basically have a city with eight roads going away from it. Alright, I will see you soon.